This is America's National Cemetery at Arlington. Today is Veterans Day. To Americans, Arlington is hallowed ground, a symbol of just how united the United States can be. But in fact, the cemetery rose out of the appalling carnage of America's Civil War, when the South fought bitterly to separate from the North. Arlington is in the state of Virginia, a southern state. For years, I have been intrigued and bewitched by what seems to be America's most characterful region, a place of cotton, courtesy, gospel music, mint juleps, divine accents, and sultry southern bells. I'm heading south to find out what makes old Dixie so distinctive. But where exactly does the South start? Well, nearly 250 years ago, two surveyors named Mason and Dixon drew a straight line on the map marking the southern border of Pennsylvania. It became known as the Mason-Dixon Line and effectively marks where the North ends and the South begins. Apparently, it really does physically exist. I'm determined to try and find it. Definitely should be here. It's strange. It's definitely the right road. I think I'm going to have to break the habit of a lifetime and actually ask someone. Good Lord. Excuse me, hello. hello. Um, sorry to bother you. I'm looking for the Mason-Dixon line. As a matter of fact, it's out this way on the road. You wouldn't mind showing it to me, would you? It's really kind, thank you. OK, right here. Oh, yeah. Down through here. Where the turkeys likes to be. <gasps> okay. Look here. I on. believe that's it. Oh, is this it? It sure is. Oh my. Here's the Mason Dixon marker. The South starts here. Oh look. That's W. West Virginia. That's fantastic. Yes, it is. West Virginia is just at the beginning of the South, a long way from the heart of Dixie. The Appalachian Mountains that form the spine of the state are as prized for the treasure that lies within them as for their beauty. I'm going deep inside to hunt for it. So you do all your smoking up here? Basically. Coal mining is far from a dying industry in West Virginia. 50% of the electricity generated in the United States comes from coal. This is Stephen Fry. Good morning and introduce him to you. You'll really enjoy spending some time with us. Yeah, buddy. Probably run the miner up there. Great. So you'll get to see him. What did that noise mean just now? <laughs> That's a CO monitor alarm. Oh, right. Yeah. Just to check that the alarm's working, not that there yeah. isn't a... Yeah. yeah. There's some who don't have moustaches. Some don't. But nobody seemed to mind. No. But it's a bit scary. How do you know they're miners? What's I'm, that alarm? Uh, probably just a belt conveyor that's off. We oh. have a lot of different alarms going off as we're getting ready to start. All right. This seam is about 350 million years old. So every day we're fighting Mother Nature. We're fighting something different that we haven't seen before. Hello. Ready? Thank you, Bob. I'm let's so go. ready. All yeah. right, guys, let's go. Let's go. Thank you. Welcome to our world. Why, thank you. Oh, my. No secrets in an elevator, I guess, huh? No gas in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first time you've been on ground? It sure is, yeah. Apart from the Underground Railway in London. Thank you. I'll go last. You know, in the main airways, we've got all this air. Obviously, 
see it. We get up to the face, I mean, just kind of watch what you're doing. They keep their hands and everything inside the vehicle. Keep glasses on. Ooh. Safety glasses. Well, this is, um, it's a hell of a commute. So I'm guessing you don't have Wi-Fi or cell phone coverage down here. No Wi-Fi, no cell phone coverage down here. You go out of here, and everybody turn their lights out. Oh, yeah. So you can see how dark it is. That's a good idea, yeah, we should do that. It's the dark of dark. So it's the it's kind the of... darkest of dark. In this vast subterranean city, whose tunnels cover a staggering 10 square miles, the exposed coal is sprayed with white limestone to help reduce the coal dust at risk of fire. This is it, the end of the road, guys. Right. Things are getting ready to change drastically now. Right, well, nice to uh, see you again tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely Thanks enjoyable. For the ride, yeah, right? did. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's hot, dark, and for a man of my height, incredibly uncomfortable. Standing up isn't really an option, is it? That cuts the cold. This, my word. They call it the beast from the east. <laughs> you have come to the best mine in West Virginia. I'm glad. Best. Oh, my. Rest all these things in his holy name. Amen. Amen. Guys, be safe. Guys, as we talk every day, let's watch this talk. Yeah, see that's, it? That's methane. That's methane. Oh, my. You oh, can it's, smell a it, tiny bit. No, you can't smell no, it. It's no, it's odorless. What am I smelling, then? Uh, probably sulfur from the water. Oh, sulfur. You can get used to it. Now, when we get up right near the face, you can see the coin. Oh, my and this goodness. And you can see, get a better idea. And it's so shiny. So right here today, you've probably got 1,100 foot of mountain on top of you. Cool. Okay. So when it collapses, you know about it? Oh, you know about it, yeah. You feel it. You hear it, and you see it. And you feel it, yeah. It's a crumble. You a feel it before it even collapses. Yeah. You can feel it breaking, you can hear it above you, Whoa. and then it'll collapse. Charming, but best left to the experts, one feels. It's at about this point that I find the prospect of continuing my journey south into the state of Kentucky strangely appealing. Unbridled spirit is the state of Kentucky's new motto. We'll find out about the spirit later on, but unbridled? Well, this is prime horse country. The Kentucky Derby is, of course, world-renowned. Thoroughbreds are big business here, and Kentucky's top bloodstock auction house is Keeneland, where the most expensive horse flesh in the world is traded. Good morning. I love the smell of horses. I love the smell of horses. And according to breeder Tom Van Meter, prime stallions are not allowed so much as a sniff of a mare until their racing career is truly over. You can touch him. So we're talking about immensely sexually frustrated creatures. If for three or four years of their prime manhood, they're not being allowed to mate, I would have thought. Yes, but, Stephen, yeah. but, but, if they are successful racehorses, then... They really do get... They get all they want, <laughs> all they need, yes, three or four times a day. But they don't know that. Stephen, yeah. if you believe in reincarnation, you would want to come back as a thoroughbred racehorse that could run, okay? Now, if you couldn't run, you know, mm. they're going to get cut off. Apparently, the services of the most expensive stallion can cost as much as $300,000 for one impregnation. This is pimping on a massive scale. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And speaking of genetics, the eldest of Tom's five children, Griff Van Meter, is a Kentuckian from top to bottom. If I say Kentucky to a foreigner, they always say Kentucky Fried Chicken and <laughs> Kentucky Derby, but there's a lot more than just those. There's definitely an identity here. You get people that stay in Kentucky for life and, and have been here for life, and that's what I really enjoy about it, because this is where I belong. I actually have a tattoo 
of the state of Kentucky, kind of on my ass. Um, well, this is British television, and there's nothing we like better than to look at an ass. I would love to show you my ass. Great. Oh, wow. And in that... Is that the shape of Kentucky? That's the shape of Kentucky. Very pleasant. If lost, return here <laughs> uh, type situation. Uh, so that wasn't uh, just one drunken moment you'll regret for the rest of your life, but it was a proud statement of your Kentucky... Exactly. It's patriotism. permanent, and I'm proud every time I see it, and it's, it's always refreshing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> refreshing see. bottom is a fine thing to yeah. have. <laughs> Today is the tail end of the three-week sale, but the auctioneers try to keep up the excitement. This is yours. Yes. Oh, we got a bid over there. We need one more to sell. Here we go. We sold it. We sold. We sold this horse. The way the auctioneer speaks is just absolutely breathtaking. It's hypnotic. <laughs> Was that bid it up here? Bid it up here. Bid it, it up here. Bid it up here. up here. Bid it up here. Now three. Bid it up here. Now four. Now five. Up here. Now down here. Do you tailor it to the kind of product that you're selling? Absolutely. So here, how would you sell chickens? <laughs> chickens tend to be a more little country and high pitch and kind of you know whoop bang dang dang. Bid it up here. Bid it up here. Now five. Bid it up six here. Now seven. Now eight. Bid it up here. Now nine. Bid it up nine nine. Bid it up here. Now nine nine nine. Bid it up sold right here. Eighty nine thousand. Oh, so. that's fantastic. <laughs> Do you know what that is? It's suddenly romantic. That's banjo picking. It is. It's, it's the uh, same sound as banjo picking. It's, it's Kentucky bluegrass. Seventy or nagadity, 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 day, 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 but a nine, 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 but a period, nine, 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 Welcome to sunny Kentucky. You know what galls me when the weather's like this? People always say, well, must make you feel right at home. You don't get rain like this, this is preposterous. We get a nice steady English drizzle. What you need in weather like this, I always think, is sort of internal central heating, you know? Not all American industry is high-tech. This Kentucky bourbon distillery preserves the style and methods of the distant past. We've had the unbridled part of Kentucky, now for the spirit. We're the smallest, slowest, oldest distillery in the, in the United States. <laughs> Chris Morris has the enviable post of master distiller. Both my mother and father worked here. Every night I remember mom cooking dinner, and she'd always have a glass of bourbon on the counter, come through the kitchen as a small boy and say, Mom, can I have a sip? I'd take a sip and, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> We'd have a good laugh and off I went. And now, of course, mm. my reaction would be very different. You like it very much. <laughs> Looks more like a Victorian prison, doesn't it? Those bars date back to Prohibition. Of course, I was, I've completely forgotten them. We're in the country here. Yes. Where for 15 years or so? Exactly. Alcohol uh, of any kind was, was federally prohibited. Prohibited. We do the usual distillery tour thing, and charming it is too. <gasps> oh, the smell. But the part that really interests me is the little tasting session. What it all comes down to is this gorgeous brown liquid. Yes, so the, the whiskey has to speak for itself. And it speaks in a language that, if you're a wine connoisseur or a malt whiskey connoisseur, you might be very familiar with it. Vanilla, caramel, there's a little hint of dark chocolate and maple syrup in this glass. Baked apple, black pepper, cinnamon, tobacco leaf, coffee bean, and a little bit of pecan in every glass. Wow. <laughs> now, to me, that's almost a poem. But is, that, is there any more to it than that? I mean, is it actually... 
just subjective, your opinion, or is there some precision and science in that? Well, it is science. So if you say, I have a hint of cinnamon, that's cinaldehyde. That is the same chemical that makes cinnamon be cinnamon. Now, knows that one, and it should have some distinctive oak notes. Some yeah, it is woody, definitely. Discernibly woody notes. Yep. That's sort of dusty wood, actually, isn't it? We have a sample here that is one of my favorite types. It should be creamier, mm. sweeter. Oh, um, try that one. Compare it to this one. Amazingly. Which is going to be a little still bit. awful smooth. It is, isn't it? Oh. Butterscotch and honey, black pepper and coffee oh. bean, vanilla and Chris, don't think me pretentious. This smell is an autumnal walk in the countryside, probably about seven miles from Aldershot, on the fringe of an old wood, a spinny or a, in the copse possibly, if not a spinny. It's a copse, definitely. Yeah, it's a copse. And there's a Labrador, a slightly wet Labrador panting, and a little bit of that Labrador's breath is in here. But that, again, that sounds bad, but it isn't. I think Stevie should have a little lie down. <laughs> oh. Next morning, I thought I'd drive the taxi to London. London? Main Street, London. No, that wasn't last night's whiskey getting the better of me. London really was calling. London City Police. I thought the black cab would appreciate a little stop in London. And besides, it was time to tidy up my act. Oh, hello. I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Have you ever been to London, England? I've not been. Well, uh, it's a bit it's bigger big. than London, Kentucky. Have you had many Londoners come in before? No, sir. Never. To my knowledge, oh, you're the first one. I'm the first Londoner. I do like your accent. Well, <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. I think yours is oh, yes. mighty fine, too. We have this phrase of short back and sides. You don't use that short phrase. Short back and sides. No, what we call burrs, which is about a quarter inch all over. Huh? And we call it burrs. Burrs. And some people call burrs. it butch. Butch. In this locality. I like butch. Okay. Butch and burrs. Burrs, burrs like the animal? Uh, like a chestnut burr. Oh, a burr. <laughs> Not a bear, but a burr. Because I tend to think of Kentucky as being quite southern in its ways, but you're kind of in the middle, aren't you? We're kind of in the middle, but uh, I'd say we're more southern, really. Yeah. We love it. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Did you realize we have the World Chicken Festival? You have the World Chicken Festival? Sure. Really? Yeah, hadn't you fellas heard about that I, over in England? I don't know how I came not to have heard of it. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. And they named it after Colonel Sanders. Of course. Uh, Colonel Sanders is a Kentucky man. And the barber I work with cut Colonel Sanders' hair. Really? He'd come in in his big white suit. And he really did look like that and dressed <laughs> like that. Absolutely. Well, let me tell you, there are lots of Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants in London, England. Uh, lots they, and lots. Uh, on, a, got on a Saturday night, the they smell <laughs> of, a, of a congealing thrift bucket fills the air. Right. And people dress up as chickens, I expect. Well, yes, yeah, some of them do. I know it's a thing uh, Americans like to do, is dress up as a chicken. Uh, that's well, true. I've got, not all Americans, obviously, but okay. you see, I got the impression that all Americans like to dress as chickens. <laughs> and I may, be, I may be wrong. Thank you. 
You are welcome. Really wonderful. And it's a you cut a pleasure fair, ooh, to me. Look at that. You cut a fair amount. <laughs> you are welcome. Oh, terrific. Well, it's um, it's quite shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I look like a. I don't know what I look like. I look. Do I look younger? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or maybe I look okay. older, but I look still different. music might be named after Kentucky bluegrass, but it's played with enthusiasm just across the state line in Tennessee, too. And in this former school on Friday evenings, enthusiasts gather for an extended jam session. Every Hello. corner is filled with the best sort of informal music making. <laughs> I would say that it that it runs it runs deep in your blood and it becomes a part of you and the, you feel the land you know when your heart Like that, yeah. yeah. That it? That's it's, it. It's one of those styles yeah. of music that once you've heard it, it's it gets fixed in, your in you blood. forever, doesn't it? Just it gets in your blood. Say. I'm a descendant of, uh, of course, the Scotch-Irish that came over yeah. across the ocean, you know. And they brought music with them. They did. They brought jigs they and reels. They did. Yeah. They did. And I do the three-fingered style picking that Earl Scruggs developed. Uh, uh, he learned from a... A lot of things from uh, Snuffy Jenkins, who was his teacher. Snuffy Jenkins. Snuffy Jenkins. It's a good name, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Do you have a name as a band? Or you... Mountain Gap. Mountain Girl? Yeah. Mountain. Mountain Gap. 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 Sorry. Real slow. Real slow. I got enough. Mountain no, no, Gap. No, not mountain. Yeah. Mountain. Mountain. Gap. Gap. Hey. I got it. I got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Y'all talk funny old word, don't you? Do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Tennessee isn't all plucking, picking, and slapping. There is a world-renowned university in the town of Knoxville, and I have an assignation there. Now, I'm supposed to meet a woman called Rebecca. That could be her code name, of course, in a car park. Rebecca, Stephen, how nice do you do? You, how nice to meet you. Oh my! We try to avoid uh, advertising our location. That's deliberate. Yes. yes. Away from prying eyes. Oh. Razor wire. Okay. I just need to shut the gates behind us. I can see black, what we would call bin liners. Every uh, black uh, plastic you see is actually uh, an individual. You That's have it. a human cadaver. Yes. A dead body, in yes. fact. Goodness me. There's over uh, 180 individuals, uh, cadavers out here. Our title is the Anthropological Research Facility. Most people know of us as the body farm. The body farm? Yes. Yeah. What would you say is the main purpose? Is to do uh, time since death. That's how long someone's been dead. 
uh, research in a scientific way. Right. So, are we going to see a few maggots and things? We I'm, don't, we, I, we as don't long know. As I'm prepared. I'm happy. I don't mind. I have to tell you something now, which is that in all my 50 years on this planet, I have never seen a dead body. So I don't know how I'm going to respond, but I, uh, I'm sure I'll be grown up about it. You just I... want to watch your step. That's an electric fence that we keep um, at night. It keeps out the larger critters. I understand. Yes. Because, of course, animals obviously feast on... Well, there's a dead okay. body. Yes. Oh, yeah. my goodness. This is I, what we call late stage uh, decomposition. Uh, where all, almost all the skeletons left. It's, um, yeah. It's a site that, uh, you know, artists and poets and writers have written about since, since humans could write, that of the oddity of a human skull, knowing that that's what I'm speaking out of now, is right. no more than that, and that's what we all are. We're all a composition of bones and flesh, but uh, to look at it, you wonder, you know, you wonder where the human is in a way, don't you? Oh, yeah. Do you see a skull through my skin? Unfortunately, I should say yes. Is a, um, I have a really bad habit now when I do see people, um, especially uh, new people, I will sit there and I kind of imagine what they look like underneath, uh, particularly the skull. So my noble macrocephalus frontal regions, for example, you would instantly see bespoke a man of immense sensitivity and grace. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You'd just see a particular category of skull. <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. What have you got in there? Right now, there is an individual in the bin. They've been here since uh, July, so they've been here for a couple months. Right, so they're over the worst of smell and insects, are they, or not? They're over the, the worst insects. Yeah, warning me that there's going to be a bad smell. Yes, I would not stick your head over until it's open. Okay. Ah! Oh, my. Oh, good gracious. Yeah. Oh, Lord. You can see the maggots. I can see the maggots, yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gracious. It's, it's a great seething, living, appalling smelling thing. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, it, it's as if it's clawing inside you to try and scoop out every living part of you and turn it into death. It's just <laughs> unspeakably horrible. I can't, I, you, I, 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 uh, I have a really bad sense of smell. Oh, do you? Yes. Um, that's, that's a something... lucky thing. You're uh, better off in this job than wine tasting. Yeah, exactly. You see, in some ways, the worst of what it is to be human. Terrible things like murdered children and murdered anybody. Plus, you see the human body in, in its most dreadful state. The goal is to help grieving families and help put a name to an unknown skeleton and get that closure. But part of you has to realize that this is a, a research object and you can't get too emotionally attached to it. One thing on this foot you'll see is ants. Yes, yes I can. Well, ants are common to find on a, a fresh individual, especially in someone's home. And doing entomology, which is the study of all the insects, is one of the best indicators of time since death. Because different insects hatch and thrive in bodies at different times. Exactly. Some of our more uh, basic studies you can look at the soil around the body uh, because things are leached from your body into the soil. So if there's like something in question, you can actually test that and say, no, no, there's a body that decomposed here. You need to tell us the truth now. This garden of earthly remains might at first glance seem rather a grisly and morbid place to be, but actually I think it should fill one with a kind of optimism because it's being used for extraordinarily good purposes to catch wicked people and to ease the burden of suffering from grieving people. And uh, I might genuinely consider leaving my body to such an institution. Uh, it might as well do some good. It's done so little good on this earth, it might at least do good when my spirit has flown away. 
whisking my offended nostrils as far from Knoxville's Department of Forensic Anthropology as possible, I revel in the pure air of the Smoky Mountain National Park as I head for the North Carolina state line. These colors are amazing. I feel a photo opportunity coming on. Hello, who's this? to be doing is chewing at the base of a branch at the end of which is a luscious supply of berries so I assume the idea is to chew right through the branch will fall to the ground you'll scramble after it hopefully take a bow and uh, then carry home his prize of a whole basket of fruit for the day and he's done it he's bitten through now he's just got to make sure this is a what an achievement Yes. Move a rock. Don't fall off, old thing. Now, he's rather disappointed that it hasn't simply fallen to the ground, but it's a bit tangled up. There's one thing animals can do. It's persevere. Still in the Smoky Mountains, it seems to me there's only one way to see this beautiful part of North Carolina at its absolute best. I've never done this before. Law. Shall I just climb in, yes? Yes, yes. I shall throw caution and myself to the winds. I like Got looking down over the edge. Whoa. Happy to hold on to things. Quite scary. You guys are over a mile high. Really, are we? Over a mile high. See, the thing to me about America is you've only got to rise up a little in any part, even a densely populated part, and you see how much of it is wilderness and how much of it is unoccupied mountains and extraordinary geographical and geological this systems. I have to say, I was, I was a bit nervous as we, were, as we were ascending, but we're now so high, it's pointless to be nervous. Wow. You were descending at a very, very, very fast rate. Good Lord. My ears are popping, I'll give you that. All right, see, so we're going to try to get down to treetop level Treetop level? Treetop level. It's a great place just to kind of look in the canopy. We were moving 34 miles an hour, which is extremely fast in a hot air balloon. Gosh. Too fast in a hot air balloon. I take it you know about those power lines. Yes, I see those, and thanks <laughs> for warning me about those. I have had a squirrel jump in before. He did about 200 circles. <laughs> I don't know who was more alarmed. I bet in his family they still tell that story of the day <laughs> N Nutkin had that adventure. <laughs> it's that silence, apart from when you're pressing the burner. It's, it's absolutely it's amazing. Beautiful, yeah, it's isn't peaceful, it? graceful. We're gonna, I'm going to try to get close enough to this tree so you can pick one of those little. Here we go. I might get one of these. Don't lean out too far. <laughs> Don't tell me that now. Ah, there you go. That's going in my souvenir bag. That's all right, a little pine tree. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> 
From the foothills of the Appalachians in North Carolina to the lowland coast of South Carolina, the vegetation changes radically. Gullah can be found here, I'm told. Gullah is a language, a culture, preserved where the freed African slaves lived on in these isolated, swampy, inhospitable islands. This is the landscape that the unwilling visitors from Africa would have first seen all those years ago. Anita Prather is a descendant of slaves brought to this coast and revels in Gullah culture. Most of us came from rice producing countries in Africa. Because of those specialized skills, we cost more. And um, we were requested. Because of that system, we were able to maintain more of our Africanisms than a lot of other Africans that were brought here. So that's why Gullah is still so prevalent in this area. Now, you've used this word Gullah. Gullah. What does that mean? It is the blending of, of the different cultures of the West Africans that were brought here with that of the Europeans that became the masters of the plantation, with that of the Native Americans that were the original owners of the property of the plantation. So you have the blending of all those different cultures. Good gracious, what does that mean? When you are here, the dare is not here. But when you're not here, the deer is here. D-E-E-R, as in Bambi. Uh, it's a fact about the South. It seems closer in history down here than it does up in the North. Does it offend you when you see a, a Confederate, Confederate flag on, a, no. on the hood of a car? Mm -mm, or? Not at all. No. But so I had a lot of students who wore the Confederate items, you know? Mm. But I was their favorite teacher. Yeah. So, so yes. a lot of it doesn't have to do that I, I'm wearing it because I hate black people. Yeah. but I'm wearing it because I feel like this is part of my Southern heritage. And I think sometimes we get offended without really understanding mm. what people are really feeling. I think you're right. Gullah is the one culture that really brings us all together because it connects us all. So hey, cousin, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well. <laughs> and so to Georgia. Georgia, in my mind, is the heart of the South. Today is the third Thursday in November, a date every American knows. Thanksgiving Day, when thanks are given for the safe landing of the Pilgrim Fathers. The thanks take the form of a feast of turkey, cranberry and pumpkin pie. On this day of all days, Americans will cross the country to be with their families. I have been invited to celebrate it at an old plantation house in southern Georgia. <laughs> okay. Well, hello there. Jeannie and Swanee, two of the daughters of the house, home for the holidays, are full of plans for exciting activities. Stephen, while you're here, we're going to put you to work. Yeah, we're going to. Starting right we're now. We're going to put you on a horse yes. right now, and then you can just go out and round up yeah, the cows. Yeah, check the oh my. Check, check the cows. The house. Yeah. I have a horrible feeling that the getting on alone is going to be <laughs> yeah. simply... Oh, it'll be a piece of cake. Let's be clear. Horses don't get on with me. I don't get on with horses. Never mind the with, I don't get on horses. But these dear people seem so keen and confident that even against my instincts, it seems churlish to refuse. How thrilling. And we have a very special breed here. It's called the Tennessee Walking Horse. Tennessee Walking Horse. Yes. I like the sound of that. And not a galloping horse, not a throwing rider off horse. And they don't horse. trot, and they're very smooth. This is Shadow. Shadow is the one horse, if we could clone, we would. Really? Yeah, because he's every, nice and gentle. He's very, very smooth. And they can put people that don't know how to ride on them. Yes, so people they like go. me, for example. Yeah. They smell your fear. Yeah. He's wonderful. I think I believe you. 
he's really good. He's dirty. He's so good. Why did you all wash him off? Stephen, I, I personally guarantee this horse. That's very nice to hear. Okay, you're gonna put your left foot there. That makes sense. And then just Where am I putting my hand? Grab a hold of his mane. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, sorry. You two turn around. I gotta get my Shadow is the name, yes? Uh, excuse me, Shadow. I'm sorry. Good boy. No, don't You're do that to own. me. Have fun. Don't do that to me. He's not going to jump over the fence, is he? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, no, no. Whoa. Calm down. Whoa. 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 Oh, whoa. 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 There's so much for the walking. You call that walking? <laughs> well, but oh. Stephen, I don't know what to tell you. I apologize. Right, I just have never, never well, happened before. Let me tell you, it's always happened with me. Whenever I've been on a horse, <laughs> uh, the horses only go, that's strange. He's never done that before. I love horses from a distance. They make very good watercolour paintings. When they run against each other to see who's fastest, I'm happy to watch it on television. Well, the um, is but any closer, and, you know, I know they mean well, but they're also rather stupid. That's it. Now I get my foot down on there, don't I? Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, well, we got it. <laughs> Never, ever again. Never. Do you understand? You can tell all your brothers and sisters uh... they won't have to put up with me ever on a horse. Uh... Holy crap. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, someone said the word bloody and the word Mary quite yeah. soon after it, which I like the sound of. Cheers to your American Thanksgiving. Well, thank, thank you. you, and thanks for your hospitality. You're delighted to have famous Southern hospitality, which is no lies. You're in the South, you're drinking and frying. <laughs> <laughs> what else does the world have to offer? <laughs> ah. Miss Schmo, how do you do? I'm Stephen. Miss Schmo is the matriarch here and a mere 91 years old. Her visiting older sister, Aunt Sneed, is a remarkable 98. Your grandfather might have been old enough to have known the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I have an ancestor, who, uh, a grandfather, who fought in the Civil War. Oh, so if I, if I touch you now, I can say I'm touching someone that's who touched someone who fought in the Civil War. Yeah, that's now, you right. you see, to me, that's amazing. We still had a hangover of that war, if you want to know the truth of Is that right? We <laughs> did yeah, still? Yeah, yeah. There's no animosity here. We get along good with yeah. our black people, and they get along good with us, and we work together, and they've contributed a lot to yes. our, our, our um, civilization. Williams had over 100 slaves, and when they were freed, he didn't lose the one. He had to just start paying them. And they all wanted to stay? They wanted to What else could they do? Congratulations, yeah, boys. Yeah, that look good? Yeah, strikes and for that Let's make Into the house. Isn't it gorgeous? Marshmallows that have melted into the sweet potato. Oh, my. <laughs> it's too late. Yes, it is a mystery. It's too late. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to raise a toast okay. um, on, on, on behalf of my country. We were very sad, naturally, to lose you in 1776 uh, over a, sure? trif a trifling misunderstanding. Uh, something to do with tea, I believe. Um, but uh, obviously, in another way, we're very grateful to have lost you because uh, if we hadn't, you wouldn't be the American that you are and I wouldn't have this extraordinary experience of coming to what is a very warm and friendly, welcoming country. Yeah. Thank you. Smartly said. Yeah,
here's a confusing thought. I'm now going further south, as south as you can go in America, and yet I'm leaving the true south behind me. first visit to Miami and I have to say um, the word hole is certainly close to my lips here. It's not my kind of city. It's hot. It's got palm trees. I'm sure it must have a heart and a soul and a meaning and a kind of delightful center or something, but I'm yet to find it. It's just horrible, horrible concrete buildings. There is another city, which is not Miami, but Miami Beach. And it's a strip of glamorous beach. And maybe it's not quite as revolting. The thing is, all seaside places are the same, because there's beach on one side, and then there's a strip of places with seafood restaurants and bars. Um, these are deco, and, and deco is a style I like very much. This part of Miami Beach is a Neapolitan ice cream, really. It has that feeling of being designed as a holiday paradise, and indeed all the dreary things that go with the word paradise, like palm trees and huge cut-out parrots that promise so much and deliver so staggeringly little. And attractive people. Attractive people who are very fit and very beautiful and instantly therefore look quite staggeringly ugly as a result. This is one of the great jokes that nature plays on the beautiful. I would rather be curled up in a snowy cabin, sipping a warm whiskey or, a, frankly, a mug of Horlicks than I would spend half an hour in this rotting place. It is, like the North, less friendly. So, although we're further south than Georgia, we're a lot further north culturally and spiritually. It's a long, long while. They're called the snowbirds, mainly Jewish retired people who migrate down from the cold north for winter. But the days grow short. On party nights, professional male dancers come into these gated communities, and these dashing young men are welcomed with open arms. Ladies, we have a lot of gentlemen here tonight. The Guys wouldn't go up to ask them to dance because they want to dance with the younger ladies. A lot of them are looking for a date for Saturday night, so they're willing to pay you to take them out dancing on a Saturday. Sometimes we go home with torn jackets and pants <laughs> with holes in them. Yeah, ripped up. Yeah, ties come off, everything. Really? They're yeah, desperate they, for dance. Yeah, they go after you. Baby. Well, the ratio down here is 10 women to every man, so. Why do you think there's so many more women? The women outlive their husbands, oh, divorced. Their husbands uh, pass away, divorced, uh, whatever. I hate dancing. So this to me is a living embodiment of hell. But I have to say the people are very sweet. It's just what they're gathered together to do that I find so ineffably, horrifically repellent. These few precious days I'll spend with you. Oh, 
all right, I admit it. Some aspects of South Florida have their charms. But as I leave, by way of the glorious Everglades, I can't but feel that heading north to the state of Alabama is really heading south again. My first stop is the state capital, Montgomery. Martin Luther King was a pastor here and led the bus boycott out of which the civil rights movement was born. A lot has changed since the painful and violent times of enforced segregation between white and black, but there's still pain and drama on show. I'm here to witness the unique institution of the Alabama Board of Pardons and Paroles. Where families of inmates can plead the cause of their relatives in prison, and families of victims have their say too. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do hear suffering all day. We do, do hear cases about murder, rape, robbery, I mean, incest. In the Shawshank Redemption, they go to the prison, don't they? Yeah. And they have a big stamp that goes, denied. Exactly. So you but haven't got a big stamp. There are only three of us. There, there are 29,000 in, 29, inmates plus in really? this Alabama prison system, and there are only three of us. Presumably you. your first consideration is the safety of society. Exactly. Right. And we're looking at whether or not we think it's likely that they will reoffend. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And this is your son. Yes. Tell us what you want us to know about him. Well, I know he done wrong. Since his incarceration, Gianni has accomplished a lot of things. I, as a parent, have seen a change. I have never seen a lady change so much. There's a difference in him now. This man does d deserve a second chance. And that is why I stand before you today and ask that you grant parole at this time to Tim. One lady, I mean, she got mad enough, I think, to hit me one day. And I said, do you realize what he's done? People can change, you know, and she just, I mean, she wanted to. And the only reason he down. stopped killing people was he ran out of ammunition. Oh, he said he was sorry for what he'd done and everything also, to, to me also. Every day he tries harder to deal with the pains that he's caused everybody. I cannot make any guarantees, but from his conversation, I feel that he's ready to come back into society. We'll now hear from the victim's side. I don't think the time served is enough. Please do not let him out. We go to the grave site. I have children now that are almost my brother's age. And I'm sure if Keith could choose, he would rather be in a prison cell locked away than in a deep, dark grave. He committed a serious crime to get in prison. Since he's been in prison, he has not done well. The board has voted in this case, and we've denied parole today. He'll be set for reconsideration in four years. And he told me he asked the Lord to forgive him. All her speech and everything is what she can do for God. Glad that, you know, she's got religion now and that she's changed her life around. But there's also a consequence for all of these crimes that she's committed. Right. One of the things you, I, I should imagine you get a lot, what you might call um, penitentiary conversion. They find Jesus immediately, and I never knew Jesus to be lost. Yeah. And they've got 33 disciplinaries in a five-year time frame, but yeah. they've got religion. You know, if you know better, you do better. I know it's up to y'all to decide, on, you know, what he... His face. He's done well, and we have every reason that he'll continue to do well, so we voted to release him on parole. Praise the Lord! Okay. Praise God! I know we have made some decisions that resulted in people being hurt. We have paroled people who have gone out and committed new crimes. I hate that, and I agonize over it. We make the best decision possible with the information that we have at hand, and we go from there.
It's an indication of the size of the US economy and their passion for sport that this is the stadium of Auburn, no more than a medium-sized college. And this is their annual game against another college within the same state, the University of Alabama, based in Tuscaloosa, a few hours' drive away. This fixture has the scale, intensity and hoopla of a grand national final, but is in reality nothing more than a local derby between amateur students, only in America. sums up America better. It's simultaneously preposterous, incredibly laughable, impressive, charming, ridiculous, expensive, overpopulated, wonderful, American. leg of my journey, I'll be following the Mississippi River from steamy New Orleans to icy Minnesota by way of parades, prisons, blues, canoes and motor cars. 